I want to take some time to revisit the races that are taking place in Massachusetts. We have two really important Democratic Party primaries coming up. We have the race between Ed Markey and Joe Kennedy for the U.S. Senate. And then we also have the House race between Richie Neal and Alex Morse. And I think that these gentlemen are running really, really good campaigns. And if they are both successful, then I think they are creating a sort of blueprint that the left should follow going forward to defeat the more entrenched establishment favorite candidate. Uh, the first person that I'm going to talk about here is Ed Markey because he was one of the most outspoken advocates for net neutrality. And he just proposed something that I think is necessary and long overdue and something that I was hoping any politician would adopt. So he tweeted this out. The internet is not a luxury. It is an essential service. I am fighting to guarantee internet for all and to keep students and educators safe. He then released this video. A return to in-person instruction is the ultimate goal. But educators and students, safety isn't an acceptable cost. We need to be smart about how we return to school. We need to base this decision not on a date, but on the data. Even once school is back in session, students will rely on the internet for homework, socialization, and exploration. Except many students don't have access to the high-speed internet that they are going to need. Up to 16 million children in the United States struggle to complete school assignments because they lack home internet access. Let's be clear, the internet is not a luxury. It is an essential service students need for their academic development, social well-being, and future success. That's what, what my E-rate is all about. It's all about guaranteeing that every child, every child gets what they need, that every family gets what they need. So I obviously think this is a phenomenal idea. Um, if we are already agreeing that the internet should be classified as a public utility, then I think that it makes sense to understand it as an essential service. Because if you think through this, that's common sense, right? I mean, if you want to participate in the economy and society, if you want to look for a job, you really need to have a stable internet connection. Like it's part of daily life in 2020. So if it's something that's essential for, you know, human beings to thrive in the United States, then I think that it should be something that's guaranteed. Like you shouldn't not have the internet because you don't have the money to afford the internet or you live in a rural area where you can't get good internet. Like I think that this is something that very quickly is becoming essential. So I like that he actually is being really forward thinking here and he's saying, we need to guarantee internet to everyone. I love this idea. Now, he's running a really good substantive campaign talking about policy. Like, I have my issues with Ed Markey, but what he's doing here is masterful. And it's paying off because at the start of this race, when Joe Kennedy announced that he'd be challenging Ed Markey, I mean, it looked like he was going to get defeated by Joe Kennedy the third. But now, look at this poll. A mass end poll found that Markey has a seven to eight point lead over Joe Kennedy, depending on whether or not you include leaners. Now, to overcome what he did in this race, when Joe Kennedy was just automatically presumed to be the favorite because he had more money, he was the establishment's favorite candidate, even if, you know, he wasn't the incumbent. Um, I mean, you gotta hand it to Ed Markey. He ran a phenomenal campaign. And if he does win, then we really have to study what he's doing here because I want the left to be successful. So whenever we see a progressive who ran a campaign that was effective, you know, like Paula Jean Swearingen and Cori Bush, we have to really look at what they did specifically and utilize their strategy, their tactics in future progressive campaigns. Like I want us to learn and grow because however many victories we already had in this cycle, I want there to be even more victories. Now, looking at Alex Morris, like it seemed like his campaign was dead because of this fake scandal that was manufactured by the College of Democrats of Massachusetts, but he has completely turned it around. He's had a phenomenal week. He's had a great fundraising week. On top of that, he got endorsed by Carmen Yulin Cruz, who is the mayor of San Juan, Puerto Rico. Uh, he got endorsed by Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez's Courage to Change PAC, which, I mean, for her to endorse him over one of her colleagues, again, that shows you why AOC is such a valuable person to have on our side. And what's a really good sign is the fact 
that, you know, now that Alex Morris is in striking distance, you know that Richie Neal's internal polling data is matching what we see from other polls because now they're spending a lot. Like, dark money groups are spending a lot of money all of a sudden to try to stop Alex Morris from beating Richie Neal. And what's interesting to me, like, what I kind of get the sense of, and I'm not sure about this, like, it's hard to confirm this, is that the smear attempt actually backfired and ended up hurting Richie Neal because it looks really suspicious, right? Like, he knew the student who helped orchestrate the smear on Alex Morris, Timothy Ennis. That guy wanted an internship with Richie Neal. And then we learned that the state Democratic Party, which obviously favors Richie Neal, was you know, trying to help them follow through with this smear, try to help them cover it up. So it looks really suspicious. It looks like Richie Neal was part of this homophobic smear campaign against Alex Morris. And now it, you know, elevated Alex Morris to a national platform. Like I knew of Alex Morris, but I really started to follow the campaign once this smear came out because it looked disgusting. Like it made me want to rally behind Alex Morris and support his campaign. So at this point, like what we're seeing, it just might be too late for Richie Neal to stop Alex Morris's momentum. Like once you get the ball rolling, it's like a snowball effect. That momentum just builds. And he released a closing ad, which was honestly just stunning. My oldest brother, Doug, was born when my mom was just 17 years old. Holyoke was struggling as factories moved overseas, but my family never gave up. My dad worked at Corando Meatpacking Plant. My mom started a daycare in my childhood home. I won a scholarship and became the first in my family to earn a college degree. Back in Holyoke, Jobs kept leaving and drug overdoses went up. Growing opioid epidemic here in Western Massachusetts. My entire life, the same politicians were in office and life just kept getting harder. So I ran for mayor when I was just 22. We're gonna change the way that Holyoke does business. We're gonna change Holyoke politics. People told me to wait my turn, that we couldn't beat an incumbent who had been involved in politics for 30 years. In Western Massachusetts last week, a 22 year old landed his first job and became the youngest openly gay mayor in the country. Together, we brought Holyoke back. When a local coal plant closed, we created jobs with a new solar farm. After drug companies poured dangerously addictive drugs into our town, we sued Big Pharma until they paid for the opioid crisis. But we can't do more without leadership in Congress. Our representative in Congress, Richie Neal, is Wall Street's favorite Democrat. He's accepted $700,000 from Big Pharma over his career. He killed a law to stop surprise medical billing after health insurance lobbyists donated $54,000 to his campaign. And when the economic crisis hit, Neil opposed funding paychecks for working Americans, but supported Trump's slush fund for corporations. In Holyoke, we're doing everything we can to save lives and save jobs during this crisis. We deserve a representative who does the same, who goes to Congress to represent us, not Wall Street, not Big Pharma. We deserve a representative who will fight for Medicare for All, a Green New Deal, and economic and racial justice. After 32 years, Richard Neal knows how Washington works, but I want to change how Washington works. I'm Alex Morris, and that's why I'm running for Congress. That was great. That was a phenomenal ad. Um, and these ads that we've been seeing from progressives, like the fact that they're all substantive, not only do they talk about like the policies that they want, but how their corporate Democrat is being bankrolled by certain industries. This is the blueprint. This is what you have to do to win. And now that we're talking about Massachusetts, I would be remiss to not talk about Isan Lecky, who is running for Joe Kennedy, the third's old seat. Like she actually has a lot of momentum. I brought her on the program. I interviewed her and was thoroughly impressed. And she could also end up winning the Democratic Party primary and taking over Joe Kennedy's old seat. So imagine the scenario where Joe Kennedy loses, gives up his seat, and then a true progressive takes his seat. Ed Markey holds his seat, and then Alex Morse ends up defeating Richie Neal, one of the most powerful Democrats in Congress. That would be incredible. That would be incredible. And we know Democrats are horrified because how many primary campaigns of incumbent Democrats have been successful? We had Marie Newman defeat Dan Lipinski, Jamal Bowman beat Elliot Engel, Cori Bush unseat Lacey Clay. Um, and that's not even naming all of the other progressive victories we've had with Paula Jean Swerdjian win her primary, Kara Eastman win her primary in Nebraska, uh, Qasem Rashid, Adam Christensen. There's so 
much victories that it's even difficult to keep track of them, which is a problem that I love having. So if we can add these wins, I mean, we're looking really good. Like we're really able to flex our muscles as a movement. So I'm watching this race very closely uh, and I'm I'm rooting for Isan Lecky, um, Ed Marquis, and also Alex Morris. This is this is shaping up to be a really interesting race. Um, if we win, I'm going to lose it. <laughs>